in the finance unit. This first graphic comes from Carvana.com. I got to enter the information on the lines. I picked an estimated monthly payment of $250 for a used auto or for any auto. And I put in, like you could select whether your score was average or high or low. I have no idea what my credit score is. I just put in average. The loan term I selected as 48 months or four years. And I pretended like I had a $2,000 down payment. And then this particular site, has a, an estimated amount that I can afford for car shopping. So interesting questions that come from this. Uh, I wonder how they come up with this amount. I don't know what interest rate I'll be charged for my loan. That would be something important to know. And I also don't know, you know, how much of a car am I getting for this amount? Car prices right now are kind of wild, so hard to know. But some interesting things to think about. Let's ignore taxes, licensing, and things like that for right now. If I were to go with a situation like that, how much would I end up paying for the car altogether if I did use a $250 monthly payment for four years? And so if we could talk about just those payments, we'd be talking about $12,000 just from the monthly payments. And then the $2,000 down payment added on altogether would give us $14,000. So how much car can I afford versus how much I pay? There's a big gap in there. And that gap is the interest that we end up paying to the lending institution. So let's start with a different scenario. We have this from Craigslist. The price of the used auto is up here in the corner. Um, Sam's planning on purchasing this through a dealer, wants to negotiate a 15% off deal. And so 15% off of $10,600 would be found using the decimal version of 15% and multiplication. The discount ends up being $1,590. And that means that the new price, the price that will be agreed upon, would be the starting value minus that discount or $9,010. After that, Sam plans to make a uh, down payment of 20% and that goes on the sale price. So grab that sale price, 20% of that sale price would be $1,802 for the down payment. And then the rest of it would need to be borrowed from a lending institution. So a quick subtraction there, $9,010 minus the uh, down payment would give us $7,208 that needs to be borrowed. That's one way to find those calculations. There are other ways, but this is one way to get there, doing it kind of step by step. So we have Sam that needs to borrow $7,208. We get this information about Sam's loan. Here's the loan amount. I plugged in an interest rate that I made up and gave a loan period. And this particular car loan calculator from the web gives out very simple information and only asks for very simple information. They tell us that the monthly payment is $209 for this situation and that the total cost of the car loan would be 7,400, 7, no, $7,541. So that's from the summary. From this information, we do know the interest rate and the length of the loan, and we get a monthly payment. So we get quite a bit of info there. How did they calculate the total cost of the car loan? When I checked this out, I did 36 months times the monthly payment. When I do that, I get $7,524, which is a little bit off, kind of a lot off, about $20 off of their total car loan cost right there, okay? And that probably comes from, this monthly payment has probably been rounded to the nearest whole number of dollars rather than having a dollar and cents amount. It's probably coming from that. Something's going on behind the scenes. This car loan calculator is nothing official. It's not official paperwork. It's probably just an estimate, but I think that's what they're up to right there. The total that Sam pays for the car comes from adding up the down payment that we already found. And then I'm gonna borrow these 36 months times $209 each, rather than their value, add that all together. Sam would end up paying $9,326 for this car loan. 
To find the amount of interest that Sam pays, one way to do it is to find the gap or the difference between the total that they pay and the final selling price. So the total paid we just found, $9,326, and the selling price that was agreed on after the discount was $9,010, and that gap is $316, and that is the interest. That is the fee that we pay when we take out a loan because we don't have the ability to pay for everything in cash on the day that we purchase something. Just checking to see if there's anything else on the screen that we need to do. Some guidelines for loans, you can check for these on the internet and they will vary, so please don't treat these like they are the absolute best guidelines, just some guidelines. Uh, according to this particular guideline, the total car payment each month should not be more than 10% of our pre-tax income. So if we have a person who has a $2,000 pre-tax income, we can figure out what their maximum monthly payment would be. And so if we do 2,000 times 10% or 0 0.10, we'll get $200 for that maximum payment. And that's for everything. That's not just the loan, it's the insurance as well in there. So that's something to keep in mind, even though in class we often don't deal with the insurance component of things. Here's another guideline. At most, 30% of a person's pre-tax income should go toward rent. So let's say a person was looking at $1,200 per month for rent. What should we be talking about for their pre-tax income? This is actually the opposite direction of the previous question. We know the, um, the monthly amount, the rent amount, and we want to figure out the pre-tax income. So we end up doing a division. $1,200 divided by 0 0.30 will give us $4,000 pre-tax income each month if we're using this guideline to figure out um, whether a person can afford rental space or living space priced at $1,200 per month. Another kind of financial calculation that we'll do uh, is percent change, and that can either be percent increase or percent decrease. And there are a variety of ways to find it. This is one way, and so I give you kind of a formula here. Percent change is the actual change divided by the original amount, and then we go talk about the Cheerios. The Cheerios are usually $4.29, but this week they've been on sale for $3.79. Percent change in the price would be a decrease. So one way to handle this would be to find the gap between 429 and 379, which is 50 cents. Compare it to the original price, the 429. Do that quick division on the calculator and then convert that decimal over to a percentage. So this would be about 11.655-ish percent decrease in price. Wait. Yeah. There was a moment there where I was kind of looking at that one more time. All right. Uh, another spot where we would want to be fluent with um, some financial literacy, we have a KBCC grad currently working in Kalamazoo with a salary of $32,000 per year, but they're looking at a job offer someplace else where the cost of living is different. In Boston, the cost of living is 93% higher than in Kalamazoo when I looked this up um, maybe a year or so ago. If the KVCC grad wants to make sure that they cover that cost of living, then they would have to ask for a higher salary than what they're currently making, and our job is to figure out what that would need to be to cover that cost of living raise. So we need 93% of the 32 grand that they're currently making to give us the amount more they would need each year, and that comes out to be $29,760. And so their new minimum salary, you would find that by taking their old salary and adding on the amount of the increase to get a new salary of $61,760. We need to be able to work with simple interest and I leave you some scenarios where we would be using it. So make sure that you take a look at those so you can kind of separate things. For the simple interest formula, all of these end up being true. I does represent the interest that is earned or charged, depending on how we're viewing the problem. P is the loan amount, called the principal. 
when we find the total amount a person needs to pay back, we need to add the interest to the amount of the loan or the starting amount. R is the interest rate, and it does need to go in as a decimal. And to find the interest we end up paying, we're going to multiply P and R and T together. That's what this formula means. PRT, it's multiplications in there. So let's get going with that. We have a friend from math class who's borrowed $200, simple interest loan, it says right in the problem this time, at 14% for nine months. Here's their work, and I think it has some issues. The $200 looks good, as does the 0.14 for the rate. It's this nine that is the problem. That would mean nine years. The T in the simple interest formula is time, but it always goes in as years. So nine months would be nine months out of 12 in the year. Go ahead and use a fraction for that. And then you can do all of this work, 200 times 0.14 times 9 twelfths, and we would get $21 in interest. So that they need to pay back a total of the amount that they borrowed, 200 bucks, plus 21 more dollars in interest for $221 altogether. Finance charges on credit cards are simple interest on the average daily balance. So let's pretend in this case that we have a person with an average daily balance of $477.50 and their credit card charges 15.2% APR. To get the finance charge, we can use the simple interest formula. Maybe I'll put it in here at the top. We need that principal times rate times time. In this case, the principal is the average daily balance. The rate is the rate given to us by the credit card company, put it in as a decimal. And then there's a couple different ways to handle that month of September. One way to do it is to call it one month out of 12. And when we do that calculation, we get this long decimal 6.0483 and it goes on. If you were being more specific, you could use September having 30 days out of 365 in the year, and you'll get a different answer by a little bit. There's also the situation where the bank might be using five bank holidays, and they would be using 30 days for September out of 360 days in the year altogether. That'll be told to you in the problem what you should use, and if nothing is given and we don't know the month, then go ahead and use 112 okay, for just one month. So I left a couple different answers here depending on how we view the month of September. Either about $6.05 or about $5.97. Payday loans are simple interest loans. These are rather predatory, but I do understand why people would uh, utilize these. To handle these, we would use simple interest formula, but the question I usually ask about these is to go find the interest rate. So in this one, we have a person who gets a $300 cash advance and they agree to pay back $332.88 in two weeks. So that gap between those two, that's really the interest that they're being charged, $32.88. The interest rate can be found from the simple interest formula if we fill in all of the components. So here's the interest. Here's the $300 that we borrowed. I don't know the rate, but I do know that two weeks have gone by out of 52. So to solve this for R, we would need to divide off the 300 from both sides and also this fraction of two out of 52. And then it all needs to go in the calculator, and I highly recommend this extra set of parentheses here. Do 32.88 divided by, and then parentheses, 300, another set of parentheses, 2 divided by 52. Close both sets of parentheses, and you'll get something like 2.8496 for this. And I already mentioned that these are considered usually to be predatory lending practices. They have a terrible reputation. Um, so you might be thinking, oh, Nicole, it just says 2.8496-ish percent. That doesn't sound terrible. But this is the decimal version, and so to get to the actual rate, the percentage version, we need to move the decimal point two places to the right 
And when we do that, we get 284.96% is the rate that they are charging. And I think that looks far scarier. This is for you to fill in. Please let me know if you have questions. I hope this helps you get started with the finance unit.